Hello and welcome back to Dukascopy TV. Up next, we've got something a little bit glamorous for you. Abdallah Shatila of Rashea Holdings joins me in the studio now to discuss the diamond industry. Abdallah, thank you very much for coming in today. Thank you for having me. Okay, now first up, the international diamond trade watchdog, the Kimberley Process, has recently lobbied for all restrictions preventing the sale of Zimbabwe's diamonds to be removed. What impact could the opening up of Zimbabwe's diamond market have on the diamond industry <coughs> as a whole? Zimbabwe's production is around 8, 8 million carats, so it's uh, quite significant. It represents almost 6% of the world production. Zimbabwe diamonds are known to be among the best diamonds that exist in the high quality end. So it will affect the market in the sense that we have more goods pouring in the market. And, uh, but nevertheless, the market is very wide and uh, we've been seeing a lot of these bans through the last five, six years and it really didn't affect the market at all. Now, polished diamond prices fell in October as trading volume did not quite meet expectation for this time of year. Just how much could a <coughs> Christmas surge, for example, change that outlook? And how are you forecasting this, not just now, but also heading into 2014? Look, diamonds are very much correlated to the economy, more than the market. So if the economy is doing well, diamond sales go well. And uh, diamond consumption is linked also to GDP. So the higher the GDP, the higher the diamond consumption. And as we all know in Europe now and the uh, United States, GDP is growing very slowly. So the consumption of diamonds is also growing slowly. And same thing in Asia. And uh, diamonds, like any other assets, we're focusing a lot on Asia. And as we all know, Asia hasn't performed so well this year. I believe that Christmas will be very average. Uh, all the outlooks that we have are not very positive. But again, being correlated to the economy for, uh, regarding next year, 2014, if the economy will recover a little bit faster in the States, I think that we might have some chances of a better sales outlook in, in the diamond industry. Well, interestingly, Tiffany & Co. have partially attributed a 50% surge in Q3 profit to its yellow diamond collection. Can you walk us through this, this divergence then in performance and popularity between, say, the yellow diamonds to polished diamonds? You see, the big brands have a big advantage versus the smaller groups that they can work a lot on marketing. Yellow diamonds have always existed. Uh, usually the most sought diamonds are white diamonds that go from a scale to D to Z. And then the yellow diamonds, which we call the fancy colored yellows, they go from fancy to fancy intense to fancy vivid, which are different type of grades, but all uh, recognized are as good yellow diamonds because we also have the, what we call the average quality yellow diamonds, which go from Y to Z. Uh, they use this marketing for two reasons. The white diamond prices have gone up uh, drastically the last 10 years. They almost tripled. The value of yellow diamonds have also tripled, but going from a very low price, which started around $5,000 per carat for a fancy yellow, they jumped only to $20,000 per carat for a fancy yellow, between 15 to 20 versus a white diamond, uh, for a five character nice white diamond, you'd have to pay around $200,000, $250,000. And a nice yellow diamond, you have to pay $100,000. So for the same size, you get a nice yellow diamond versus a less attractive white diamond. And big companies have understood, uh, have understood this, and this is why they go forward on marketing more those yellow diamonds, which have a big look and good quality, but at the same time, they're cheaper than the white goods. So it's a case almost of getting more for your money, really? Exactly, because also the fact that yellow diamonds are a little bit undervalued today, it's still quite attractive for the end user. Okay, then, Abdallah, and lastly, we have touched on Zimbabwe, but where else are you noticing investment pockets opening up within the global diamond industry? Look, Russia is investing a lot of money in the diamond industry. They have, they have, first of all, they have one of the biggest production that exists. And second of all, they have a lot of means to be able to develop the mining itself. Arosa is today one of the biggest players and they play the game very well. Today, you know, five of the big majors control 80% of the market and Arosa is one of the five. So uh, I really believe that African mines this is where we'll get the biggest uh, good news regarding uh, upstream. But the problem is that today that the investment case on diamond is so good 
that we have discovered no mines that will be able to compensate the volumes that we need in the future. So even though we have a slowdown now in the market because of the economy, we know by fact that in the next five to ten years the diamond production will be so little that diamond prices will surge. Abdallah, thank you so much for coming in and sharing your insight with us. Thank, thank you, you so much. much. That's all we've got time for right now, but I'll be back shortly with another exclusive interview for you. Goodbye for now.